We're going to look at how to build a bridge structure with a canopy. The bridge undulates and has hexagonal shingles like a dragon. I'll use a Grasshopper plugin called Launchbox today, and I'll share the link below if you haven't got it installed on your Grasshopper yet. First, I will use Nerves Curves to create a base for the bridge, then I will generate a canopy surface through a grass mapper. Then I'll tessellate the surface with the hexagon cells components in Launchbox. Finally, I'll complete the bridge with a space frame structure, which is also one of the Launchbox components. I'll start with a base code for bridge and canopy. I'm going to use control point curve. Let's drop four arbitrary points in the space. And what I'll do, I'll elevate the mid two points to give a bit of elevation to the bridge. Next, I'll generate a curve uh, from param to contain this curve and set one curve and select that. It's good. And next will be, we're going to offset this to create a, a base curve for the bridge path. And I'll offset this by two meters. There you go. That's just been offset it. What I want to do, I want to equally offset this. So go back to param and grab integer, apply expression, give minus x and connect it there, hold down shift and apply to distance. Now two curves been equally offset it from the center curve. Next is we have to loft this. Uh, it doesn't matter which loft you use, um, we'll have to flatten the loft to curves. Next, we're going to create handrail. And I'll move the handrail about a meter above the surface. And I'll give thickness to the handrail by using pipe. And I'll give, this is a meter handrail, which is pretty big. So I'll give 0.05 for the handrail dia and give it to rails and I'll keep it to round, which is quite nice. All right, so that's that. So we now generated the base bridge and the handrails. Next, we'll be creating a wavy canopy. And we'll have to, we'll have, to have a multiple per frame, per frames. So that gets connected to curve. I'm going to borrow the length to determine the number of counts. So I don't want to make it too much, but I'm going to divide this number by two. So it will spread a bit nicely. There you go. That's just been connected. And next we'll be, we will have to offset this. So basically the notion of this uh, dragon skin canopy is that we're going to use a sign curve from the from the graph mapper and apply that by every you know every 20 meters for example or every 10 meters you you get a sine curve occurring uh, all the way up to the um, end point of the bridge so we'll have to move this origin point if you like where we segregate this curve to x direction okay if i go back to the perspective again so you know that's x and y just to make sure direction you just need to display the vector so display vector just to get the sanity check done uh, you'll have to deconstruct these planes so you can deconstruct planes and connect that to frames to plane and origin will be anchor point and connect x axis to vector. Now you can see the errors are pointing out in the right direction so we know x is safe to use. So next we'll be we'll have to move these points by using move components. Motion will be multiplication of x axis and origin gets connected to geometry, the motion gets there. We need to make it fluctuate um, by using sine curve. So I'll type graph mapper, change the type to sine. So like I said earlier, so I want to move that by say sine curve to occur every 10 meters. Well, it could be 20 meters. I'm just giving 10 meters for now. And you want to move it uh, by five meters max. 
and you want to repeat that you know it's a nice sign recurrence should happen so get get it moved to the center of the graph mapper so to make it work we know how many frames there are and we have to get the exactly same numbers to the graph mapper the best way of doing it is using series and you know how many uh, how many items that we have which is using the division here uh, we have 33 to get absolute you know the right number you just can you can drag this frame numbers which will calculate this by using uh, i list length so connect the frames to list and the length gets connected to the count we know the step is one and starting from zero that gets connected to graph mapper the output using panel you'll be able to see that is nicely fluctuating so that gets connected to b if i go back to top view you see the sine curve has been applied to the side of the breach at canopy so you now need to elevate these points which is currently being you know offset to the x direction this now has to move to the z direction just type move component again and that gets connected to geometry and we have to move to x unit and this is really simple we just need to connect it again to the uh, unit z if i go to the front view which is elevation you see that the curve has been nicely applied um, i know this is touching the ground again and up and again and up um, to avoid this you can either just drag it all the way up or halfway through and you can control the curve you know, the sine curve if i go back to perspective you'll see what i mean by whether it's touching or not so halfway through there is 2.5 because we know the max is five meters the bottom there is a zero so place somewhere around midpoint is quite a safe place to be um, next we'll have to complete the other half is the way to approach this is copy the whole thing and just uh, do exactly the same thing but in a different direction however we know we already done the hard work so all we need to do just grab these two move and control c control v move it up there what we have to do now is that we have to just simply change the tweak that and give minus x to expression that way you can just simply flip this by using the same axis point so now we just generated uh, uh, the other side of the curve. Let's hide this all, just because there's too much going on at the minute. So turn off the preview. I'm going to use nerve again, nerve curve to connect these all. So geometry gets connected to vertices, copy and paste. The bottom gets connected up. I'm going to turn off these points as well, turn off the points. Go back to the top view. Now we have nicely created the fluctuating the curves on the both side uh, next move will be lofting this there are different types of lofts um, i'm going to use a fit loft this time because that will make uh, these two curves into surfaces this works pretty well uh, when it uh, when it's applied correctly basically we'll have to increase these u points to fit it perfectly fine um, so i'm going to increase that to 30 u counts started fitting nicely again there if you increase it it will reshape it to fit perfectly to the curve however it doesn't need to get that high resolution so i'm going to keep it somewhere around 30. u can be uh, as low as five i'll just give five there uh, to keep it quite low um, so 30 and five seems about right and next will be tessellating this uh, using lunchbox if you go to lunchbox and go under panels you will get a number of different tessellation here i'm going to use a hexagon cells and if you connect the surface to surface they will tessellate this uh, base surface into hexagons so we'll give you same as uh, the u that's been gone into the fit loft and five as a u division 
so it seems like quite a nice number. I'll turn off this preview. You can now see the hexagon's been uh, generated. Next, uh, we'll have to uh, create a surface now, which is to create a nice surface canopy of the hexagons. Uh, so we're going to use a patch surface, uh, which is also part of the uh, lunchbox component. Now apply this, graph this individually. And next we'll be going to slightly increase this. Uh, so currently set as two and two. I'll give it five and five. Again, that's that will make it fit better to the hexagon cells. So we just completed uh, creating the surface for the hexagons. Uh, next, we're going to use structure using uh, space truss structure two. Uh, there are two different types. Uh, so the first one is requiring the surface and UNV division, which is basically taking this surface and using the same UMV counts. There is another one, which is structure two, will require two different surfaces. At this time, that you will probably have to offset this surface by using offset surface, or offset surface here, and that, that gets connected to surface B. Uh, it doesn't matter whichever that you use, you will get the, you'll get the same result. So I'm gonna stick to the simplest one and connect the surface to the uh, surface and U will be that and the V will be that. Um, I know it's very deep structure. So trust depth is currently set as five meters. And I change that to um, 0.5, so which will be 500 mil. And uh, that's now being connected there. Uh, we, you probably noticed that this is touching the uh, the hexagons, and you probably can't see it well. But sometimes it's extruding above the panels. So what I'll do, I'll move this surface slowly up to Z, you know. So connect the surface to geometry and using using Z unit and move it up by 0.3 just to be clear of the uh, the truss top of the truss i'll turn off these two okay so that's it so now we have just completed the truss structure at the bottom you can pipe this off of course to give give a thickness and radius will be 0.05 again which is seems not too bad. And I'll turn off this. And you basically have to apply this to every single curve. So prime, prime line one, prime line two, which is the bottom. The web line is the, the connection between these two prime lines. So that's that. And now, since we made it parametrically, uh, you know, controllable, can now test that you can bump that up to 20 see what it does to the curve so if I go back to the top view so this is more moderate you know the more subtle the curve of course you can increase that by dragging and introduce another hump I'll move it back again in the middle of course you can make it more dramatic by dragging it down And it will touch, you know, it will vanish, you know, you touch the central curve and you know, it expands out again. So um, that's probably it. And you know, of course, you can control the base curve to shape this whatever that you want. And this could be a facade structure as well. So if you drag it up to Z direction, you know, you can wrap up the uh, facade of the building too. I'll keep it. As a bridge for now and uh, that's it i um i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you next time thank you